Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. A little bit of a different one today, got some posts and uh, I get a lot of tennis accessories, gear, strings, rackets in the mail uh, on a monthly basis at least. And now I got a shipment from a few different companies, products they want me to review. And uh, let's have a preview of the stuff before I give my honest opinion. I haven't really tried any of this yet, so bear with me. Here's a messy desk, as you can see. First of all, I got some rackets. Uh, these are not rackets for reviewing as much as I'm supposed to check out the pallets, the grip pallets, that is. So you check here, it is from Nick Verdun from Inteco, that's the International Tennis Consultancy. So he uh, molds these grips and he wanted to give me three different types of grips. The white one here uh, is lighter. Then there's the standard more yellowy one and uh, more in the shape of a bubble, as you can see. Uh, to test that, these are all grip 2, which is kind of what I prefer these days. They used to be grip 3, but I'm, I'm feeling grip 2 more to kind of get to that semi-western and one is the grip of a Wilson. So I'm supposed to test these, see how they feel, how they perform. Uh, it's the same racket. It's the Dunlop Biomimetic M2.0. I don't, don't think I've tried this one, but that's not really the point here. It's that it's supposed to be uh, testing these, these grip pallets. This uh, copper tape from a guy called Evan in the States. Uh, it's, it's supposed to work the same as lead tape, but in, with copper instead. So the idea is uh, that you're not supposed to get any kind of worry around lead contamination. To be fair, I don't think there's much of an issue unless you lick the lead tape. If you, if you listen to the interview I did with, uh, with uh, Nikki Run recently, uh, we talk about that. Like if you, if you hand the lead tape, you just wash your hands, you know? But you know, I still wanna give this, this copper tape a go and see if it's, um, it's any good, if it's the same or if it's even better, uh, whatever. So here you go, this is, this is kind of the lead tip I buy. It's a roll, I think this is gamma. I just wash my hands and I don't uh, lick it or put my fingers in my mouth. Uh, you need to really uh, be around a lot of lead and take lead baths for, for you to worry about lead contamination. But still, the people do that, so I think there's a... There's an interesting uh, take here from Katana. And this is kind of an unboxing video. I never understood unboxing videos 100% because I mean, just show what the product looks like, but, but let's have a look at how to unbox this or unwrap it or whatever. Ooh, very shiny. Look at this. Quite a nice um, and quite a decent amount as well. This is available only on Amazon, Evan told me. So you have to buy it from there. There's a link in the description so you can check it out if you want to check out this product. Feels a bit firmer. Uh, looking at the, the packaging, it says 0 0.2 grams per inch, uh, which should be approximately the same, I think. Uh, Non-lead based alternative, okay. So as you can see, there's four strips of, of quite decent length here. So uh, this will last you a while unless you're a professional customizer or have a lot of rackets. So as some of you know, this is one of my favorite rackets right now, the TF40. Um, this is the 1619 uh, 305 gram version. I'm not sure which one I like the most. This one gave me a bit more pop on serve than the 1820. A little bit more spin potential, but not as much control. So, um, but it does need a little bit of weight. This swing weight is, is a bit lower, so 323 with this 130 gauge grapple snake tour mate string. So let's try to add just a tad of weight to it. So here's the traditional lead tape. Here is the copper tape. I cut myself straight away on this one. So it's a bit sharper to work with, not as maneuverable, pliable as the good old fashioned lead tape here. So let's put them on the scale because these are the same measurement and we'll see what the difference is in weight. So this is my trusty three in one machine uh, that definitely is worth the investment for a tennis nerd like me. It's not cheap, but uh, if I am doing this uh, as a job, kind of, I need to have these tools. So I'm uh, very happy to have this one. 1.7 for the copper tape, 2.5 for the lead. So it's, it's like it, the lead tape is a little bit heavier than the copper tape. Uh, that's quite clear. Uh, so that's good to keep in mind that you need more. Let's measure the swing weight of the uncustomized TF40 2022, 305 grams and 1619 pattern. So you've seen this before and we'll see where we end up. I think it's around 323 last time I checked, slightly below five inches. We'll see what happens. So almost 323. Yeah, 322.5. Let's see how much the copper weight will add to the swing weight. Okay, so I've added it. Uh, it doesn't look amazing. Um, 
quite different from the lead. Uh, I did notice there was a little bit tough to, I mean, this is partly the racket because I found that the paint is quite hard to even add lead tape to, but. Yeah, so 329, it added about 6.5 uh, swing weight points, which is, which is decent. If I add lead tape, I think it will be up to 10 points, but uh, we should obviously try that as well. So when I played with this racket yesterday, I noticed that it needed some swing weight boost. Uh, I would love to, to bump this up 10 points. Let's see how much the, um, the almost 5 inches of uh, lead tape increases the, the swing weight of this. The lead tape is applied at the same position, 12 o'clock, which increases swing weight the most. Let's see how much this actually influences the swing weight now with the lead tape instead of the copper tape. 3 to 8, which is exactly what I want. So this actually bumped it up 10 points. So the, the lead tape is heavier and will increase the swing weight more. Uh, whether you like that or not is another story, but, but that's, that's the verdict here. Lead or copper? That's the question. Uh, this is firmer, the copper. Firmer and lighter, so it's a bit more difficult to apply. And there was also in the packages I received, quick power for your best tennis. This looks like a throwback product. QP Tennis, never heard of it before. Uh, so there are these weight modules. Uh, I think I dropped them. There are these weight modules that look like this. And I think we need to open this and, and give this a closer look because I don't know how this works. It looks like dampeners that have some weight. But uh, yeah, let's open up and, and check. So from adding weight with tape to adding weight with something that looks like a dampener. So these will go into... Um, the strings and add a certain weight. Let's see how much they weigh each. So approximately two grams, 1.8. Let's try that to make sure, 3.6. So here we have a blade version 8, 1619 that I've already customized with some lead tape. And we'll see what these weight modules can do to it. It's already three to four, but I mean, I like my rackets around 330 plus, so, um, 3 to 4.5. Let's add these modules and see where we end up. To start, I added 2 at 3 and 9. So it makes the racket look like that, like it wears headphones almost. Um, let's see how much that affected the swing weight. Yeah, quite a bit here. So uh, now this racket is kind of perfect for me. From 3 to 4.5 to 3, 3 2. So nice uh, little increase. Um, not sure if this is legal, if this is called like a dampener. I, th I think you're only supposed to place the dampeners on the bottom string. But uh, yeah, we'll see if this is legal or not, according to the international tennis rules. I also got some strings, as I tend to do. A few unknown test sets, like prototype strings from MSV that I'm going to try. So I'm very keen to test these prototype strings and if in case give my feedback. I also got a string called Prism from Durex. They have a lot of strings. Ultimate feel, perfect spin, uh, three-sided, co-polyester. Um, usually these are a bit boastful, these power ratios, but it seems to be a very powerful string. Uh, but power and control are almost close to each other. I, I never like these kind of ratios here. It's, it's not my thing. But we'll see. I mean, uh, I hit with it briefly yesterday. It felt felt good, kind of like an all the power style string. Um, and uh, yeah, nothing unique, but but decent. So they, they've made some, some good strings uh, as well. But there's so many strings. I don't really know what to tell you there. There's so many strings. It's just a little bit too much sometimes. Also to, for me to test, you know, so. And then they also had... Uh, which is already in the racket here, uh, a star-shaped string. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the diadem. Uh, I don't remember the name of that string, but uh, they had a star-shaped poly of the same color. And I don't know if you can have intellectual property issues with, with these types of things, but yeah, here's a star-shaped poly of the same color. Imitation is the best form of a flatter, you know? So I guess that's the whole thing, and that's a Durex. Felt pretty lively, this string. This is a good racket, by the way. It's the Techstream Tour 310, uh, the one I used to play with, so. Uh, I also got this tension tester from MSVs. There are a few different tension testers on the market. Uh, some of them you can't find, like probably the best one, which is the ERT down here. That measures dynamic tension, so it gives you a reference value, and then you, 
you test that, but they work in a similar way. And this one gives you the pounds or kilos straight away. Uh, and you, you put them in the middle of the string bed and then you, uh, you get a measurement, you tap the racket, it vibrates and you get a measurement of, uh, of the string tension. These are not exact, it's good to keep in mind. So, you know, you have to try to find your reference and see, you know, the approximate tension loss over time. So you need to really be a bit diligent when you're testing these. You're not gonna get the exact scientific tension uh, straight away. There's, uh, this is kind of a variant of the old school Torna string meter that looks like this and that's pretty similar. Uh, this doesn't give you an exact measurement but at least it can kind of see how much you lose over time. So this one you, you clamp in the, t in the string bed and then you pull and you see you know how much the string pulls. So that will tell you how much tension there is on the string. So these are all three different tension testers find this one to be the best one and the one that gives the most accurate. This, this one seemed pretty good when I tested it. Uh, this one I don't believe as much, but I think it works as this one in a way that it gives you a reference. There's also the app, a uh, Swedish guy actually built an app that you can also use to measure the sound of the string bed. So you ping the string bed and then it will give you a certain sound and, and that's uh, gonna give you a reference tension. But yeah, you, you won't get the exact tension, but it's gonna work as a tool to keep track of how much tension loss you have and when it's time to restring and so on. It's this string uh, that's coming here in view. Already been testing this for quite a while, actually like this string. It's Luxlon All Power Vibe. I think there are some other YouTubers I heard from Luxlon that have already done a video about this one, but um, there's, there, it's out in March 8th, uh, so around the time of the um, BMP Paribas Open. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do my review when it's out for you to buy, so it makes more sense. Um, nice, interesting polyester that they've they kind of ground up some dampeners and, and put into the mix of this string. So it's a, it's a pretty dampened string, but it's not a super soft string. So it's not like one of those polyesters that's very soft and springy. It, it's quite firm and quite controlled, but it has a bit of a more dampened feel and I haven't noticed any arm issues. So maybe it does dampen a bit more, uh, but the stiffness is, is kind of in between Olu Power and 4G according to Luxlon. So, uh, not the most comfortable string, but um, does seem to dampen vibration quite a bit. So interesting new string, Luxlon Vibe. I also got a few string samples, as you can see, the MSV Focus Hex, uh, which is a very popular string. Several of my friends actually use this, advanced players, uh, good poly, very low price. So that's why it's a bestseller, because it actually performs well for the price. I haven't tried it in blue, so I'm gonna do that. There's also MSV Technora, which I never heard of. A very, very thin gauge, 110 millimeter. Um, interesting color here. It looks, you know, a bit beige, brownish. So uh, we'll see how this plays. Um, it is uh, Technora Aramid fibers twisted and bonded together. Uh, so this is kind of a unique string for hard hitters demanding extra string life. So I'm gonna try this and see where it, where it leads. It will be interesting. I will, I will string it up soon. And then uh, a few sets of, of MSV Focus Hex Black in, in thinner gauges, the 118 millimeter. So that's also for testing. As you can see, there's quite a lot of stuff to try. So some reviews take a bit more time. I also need to string all this stuff myself, which is not, uh, I don't love stringing uh, to be fair, although I do it quite a bit, but I don't love it.